Hi everyone and welcome to another video. Uh, in this one, hopefully, this will be a short one, we'll wait and see, uh, just wanted to take you through one of my recent projects really, um, what I'm calling the Digilog Clock. Uh, it's based on WLED, it's actually a feature that's already in there which enables you to have a analog style clock with obviously LEDs as the main sort of source of time and light. So I made up this particular custom holder for it all. This uses the LED ring, um, so the 60 LED rings, um, the ones that come in like you get four in a quadrant and then obviously you can put them together to make the whole circle. So this is it, actually obviously it's all finished, so this is how it looks. It's, the camera is kind of overexposing as it always does with these sorts of light sources, so it's not quite as accurate. The colours between the hour markers um, are actually significantly dimmer in real life. It's not quite so bright as it looks here, but I've got the exposure down as low as I can go and it's still overexposing. So um, like a lot of these sorts of things, they always look better in real life than they do on camera, unfortunately. So I wanted to take you through what this is, what it does, um, and just the way that it's been built. So let me go and turn all the lights back on and we can have a look at the Digilog clock. So this is the actual thing itself. Um, ignore this, this is just the uh, stand I'm using to prop it up with. There's a power cable coming directly out the back. Um, the actual clock has been designed to be used in two ways. One is it can be used as a desk clock, so it can just stand up on the surface. The other way is it's been designed to be able to be hung from a wall. So this gives you the ability to actually use this in one of two ways. So I'm going to turn the power off now. Unplug that. Let's move that out of the way because I don't need it now. Um, so the construction is really, really simple construction. Um, I printed this out. It's on my Prusa Mark III. Now this is a multi-material print, um, but in reality you don't need the MMU to be able to do it. This is actually just different layers have different uh, materials or different colours of material. This is all PETG. So on the front of it we've got this diffuser which we'll come back to in a minute. Um, underneath that, you've got the four uh, quadrants for the LEDs. So you've got the 60 LED ring underneath that. Underneath this, there is this piece here, which is there just largely to stop any uh, light that's reflected off the back of this um, to go down and then reflect back through. So you don't end up with sort of ghost images on this. So move that out of the way. And then underneath that, we've just got the uh, ESP, and I always get the numbers wrong here, the ESP8. 266 I think I always get the numbers around the wrong way um, so one of the cheaper models this is a D1 mini clone um, and then my controller board underneath it or my carrier board underneath it um, this is version 1.1 so we've gone from version 1 to version 1.1 and um, there is version 1.2 uh, in the mix. Uh, it's been designed I just need to get some boards made for that one and I'll show you the differences of these in a second and that's it so obviously the board itself this is sparsely populated i've used this mainly just as a way to get power to this thing and also level shift the three volts out this to the five volts that the ring is expecting so um that's literally all this does it's just a carrier with underneath there is a level shifter so the thing with this one you can see obviously the power is coming down it's coming through the back of the board at the moment so that is just popping out through the back there um now, the other way that this was designed is so that the way that the stand is put in is there's a plug here. Now, I can't remove it. Unfortunately, eh, shall we say a design flaw, um, which I will, by the time I get these up on uh, Thingiverse or something, um, this will be corrected. But this, basically, the gap inside here is not deep enough, so they can't flex in and out enough um, and the issue that you've got is that I did try to do it once and I've cracked this down here now it's not a big problem for the whole print but and for the integrity of it um, but it means if I try and do it again I'll just break it even more so uh, I can't undo this one at the moment but that will hopefully be uh, changed for the final one but the idea of this is that you can move the power socket from here to here so that, that way the power cable would basically just come out the bottom 
so that if you've got it on the wall, obviously you can just have the power lead coming straight down and out. It also, slight sort of pseudo safety, um, if someone was to trip over the cable, because it's, I mean, hopefully it wouldn't be running across the floor in a way that people could trip over. But if people were to, because it's facing down, hopefully the main force of it would be peeing that way. So that way it just pull out. So uh, hopefully it should be enough to prevent it from being too badly damaged. But yeah, we'll have to wait and see on that. Um, so inside here, there's these bits here, which are just there for support. Man spaces just so that there's enough clearance for the module. Um, now, the design of this bit around the, the inner and outer edges here, um, the inside edge here is purposefully um, low poly, uh, a low poly count. It's basically there's 60 facets around the inside here, whereas on the outside, I'm, oh, I can't remember what number I ramped it to. They're about, I think I worked it out and it's like about a millimetre per facet on this one. So there's like however many lots. Um, now, the reason I've done that is so that the locating of the front part uh, because this also has just 60 facets around the outside so you can pop it in there and it helps locate it so if you've gone one uh, wedge out of line you can just tweak it and hopefully it would line up with that so that's the thing there um, and like I say this piece here is just there unfortunately annoyingly it lifted a little bit there but it's hidden it doesn't affect its function um, and like I said this is there just to prevent any uh, the light reflecting off the front of this or oh, <laughs> knock it off the underside of this and then reflecting down and back up again because you'd see a shadow uh, clock effectively where you'd see them overlapping. So talking about that, let's move and switch these around. So the way that this has been designed, there's three layers to it. So you've got on the front here, there's several layers of this sort of smoked clear plastic uh, the plastic I've used here uh, is from uh, Ooze Nest. Um, just looking at it over here, there is Lucid Black. Um, it's not really black, it's a smoked grey, but they call it Lucid Black. By the way, not a sponsor. I'm way too small of a channel to be any form of sponsorship at the moment. Um, so yeah, that's there. And that's largely there to try and add contrast to the actual screen. So the original one, and I've got it over here, let me bring it over, is this one. This was the very first one I'd done. And it's just got this white on the front of it. Um, and the trouble was, is when the light was coming through on this one, if there was any light, in, if we ignore the light that I've got here at the moment, um, which is falling apart, I need to repair that. Um, then you, it was really hard to see the actual uh, LED segments coming through because it just wasn't enough contrast. So I got this in the hopes that it would work. And it does for the most part. Um, I can't remember how many layers are on here, um, but there's about four or so layers of the uh, translucent color here. Directly underneath that, um, you can see the white band there. That's two layers of uh, the white, which is this one here. Now that one is uh, it's still on the printer. Is 3D Jake PETG white? Um, again, not a sponsor. Um, but yeah, so that's there just to act as a diffuser layer, like this one was originally done. So that just helps spread the light out a bit more. Um, and then underneath that, it's just the quadrants on uh, the underside here, which these they need to be in a dark color. Because the LEDs are obviously pointing straight forwards, it, they don't need to reflect any light. Um, I mean, they could if you wanted to, but these you don't want these to transmit light laterally, so between segments. Um, if they do, again, you get this ghosting effect where you'll see one, the main one on, and then especially if it's like the white color, it will then spread between the two. So that's why these are dark on here. And it just means that it's, um, helps keep a distinct line. These have been, I designed this as well, that these are only two perimeters on these, um, with the whole point being that it enables you to make sure that it's as thin as possible so you don't get a big gap between each of the quadrants and they're big and they're bright and so you can see them a lot easier. Um, now the elephant in the room, the little bump in the middle here, um, that was me making a small boo-boo uh, when it came to the slicing of it. What I forgot to do is take into account the fact that the translucent will show um, it's not doing it. It does enough layers 
to do all the solid layers and then it went to the white and at that point it was doing the infill pattern which meant through the translucent layer you could see or the smoke layer you could see the infill pattern so in the end i had to i printed that off um, done in the same way so there's a couple of layers of the uh translucent or the uh lucid black uh, and then a white layer just to give it the same look uh, as the other one and what i ended up doing was just go printing out a small little jig so that i can make sure it was dead center when i put it on there so yeah it was a a bit of a bodge and i'll be doing the 3mf files which won't have that issue and i'll make sure that it's all done uh with the correct infill uh, patterns for it um and the last thing i wanted just to show you very quickly is with the original one as i said it was too bright there was too much there's too little contrast so i printed this off here um which has several uh thicknesses going up and around it um so i think it's like 0 0.4 point i think it's a two millimeter uh, point two millimeters so 0 0.4 point six eight and one something like that anyway um so the idea of this was to try and figure out what would be the best thickness for it because obviously the thicker it is the darker and more contrast you'll get but the less light you'll have coming through it so that was what this was for it was literally just to try and identify what would be the better one on it um and i think i ended up going for about four maybe five um so yeah that was sort of for me the best sort of compromise between the two so when it comes to putting this together aside from the obvious soldering of the board which is relatively easy um the hardest bit for this is making sure that that led is at the top and all of these have fallen into the corresponding uh, segment because there's nothing on this side that actually holds it in place now i suppose i could have print with this i could have printed it and had it so it does that um but actually it turns out it's not that difficult to deal with so let me just turn this back on again um, so the time is wrong until it syncs up to the Wi-Fi and then corrects for the time. So the easiest way I've found to deal with this. Now, the only thing I'll mention on here, I'm not sure how clear this will come through, because of the way, obviously, these print, um, you've effectively got two uh, sets of lines going at 90 degrees to each other. So you get a, a patterning going on with this. Now, for me, it's going up like this. So what I try to do is have this bit here, which is mostly the one up go, uh, going straight up at the 12 o'clock position, because it just, again, looks somewhat nicer. So in terms of this, you can see as I lower this down, you can see the sort of cross talk of it all. I think I've actually got that in right. There we go. So it's actually gone in fine. Um, if you find that it doesn't, it's a case of literally just pick it up, try and reposition it and pop it back down again. Um, depending on feedback, I might actually see about that support in there actually having it so it also supports the LED ring. But I wanted to be a bit careful with that because if you haven't quite aligned the ring perfectly it can be a bit tricky um so yeah um but it it works it can be a bit fiddly to get it in i won't deny that um but ultimately it does go in um with a little bit of jiggering jiggling around so if you've put it in and you find out just rotate around one that you've got in and as you can see the bottom here I'm just align this with the camera so it's more in line so that should be the six o'clock that should be the 12 o'clock obviously they're now off so because of the facets on the inside being quite low i can just rotate it until it locks into the next facet and that's it it's ready to go so that was the reason why i said earlier that we've got that on there so that is really the digilog clock um it runs through the wled software um so that's all it's running off of the um big thing for this one um, and if people are interested i'll go through the controller here there is some changes to the software that i had to compile myself because i didn't like the original color of the um LED, uh, the leds that signify hour minute and seconds and also the hour markers um so i'll probably do this is getting long now but i'll do another video uh showing the changes that i've done there um just so that if you wanted to recreate this you can do now by default you can just plug in wled enable the clock in the settings and that's it it'll work um but i found the blue which used the full just the blue led for my eyes it was really hard to see it um so i've changed it so it's this more sort of sky blue color so it adds a bit of, probably a bit of green in there um and it just helps to make that blue a little bit more visible and a bit brighter for the eye because the eye doesn't see blue very well from what i've been told so that just helps add a bit of other color so it's make it a bit brighter so the eye can see it a bit easier still blue but yeah it's a it's a lighter blue 
Um, but yeah, that is the Digilog clock. Like I say, if you do um, want me to go through the sort of more in depth of what the differences are here, um, I might hold off until I get to the third version of this, so version 1.2, um, because there are some changes from this one to that one, which uh, make it a bit easier if you don't want to have some of the ancillary circuits to it. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you in the next video. Cheers.